fellow developers, engineers, builders, and hackers. Too long have we had to deal with something that I consider one of the banes of my existence, one of the worst pet peeves that I have to deal with on a weekly basis, and that is terrible software development kits and crappy APIs. I swear it feels like every single time I go to start a project and I really get going deep into it, I have it designed, I have a lot of it built, and then when I get to one part of the API, it just seems to completely fail and not work. Or the API has some certain limitation, it just simply doesn't give a certain piece of data that would seem extremely intuitive to be included in the data set that they give you. Or another time they just don't allow you to use a certain functionality even though there's no security concern surrounding that functionality. Last year I tried to make an application using Etsy's API and what I wanted to do was help Etsy sellers make better inferences and get more insights into how they can get more sales on their shop. So I got a lot of the basics working. I started going into the API, getting deeper and deeper. I got authorization working on a test shop and I got a front end that looked okay. And I got to the part where I was basically reading each receipt and it was supposed to tell you how many of each item are on the receipt and how much each item costs because that's kind of intuitive but that's where Etsy's API just kind of falls apart. For whatever reason, they don't actually allow you to see each individual item on the receipt and how much it costs. You can see, I think, which items were in the transaction and what the total order amount was, so like what your subtotal was of the items, but you can't see each item's cost. So if a certain item was on sale, you can't see that. If you wanna see how many of each item were on the receipt, I don't think you could see that either. You can kind of just see how much each transaction was worth, which isn't really worth a lot in terms of data metrics because if they bought 10 items in your shop, how are you supposed to see exactly how many of each item you sold? I don't know how this would be any sort of security risk. I don't know how this would help anybody having the API built like this, but that's just the first example that I'm gonna talk about. Moving on, this past weekend, I was trying to build a Figma plugin, and what it was going to do is export some things to Notion. Now when I use Figma, it's pretty intuitive and the API was also pretty intuitive and there wasn't really a problem until I got deeper into my project. So it turns out that little key at the top of the URL when you have a Figma page open is called the file key. You can't actually get that unless your plugin is being built for an organization. Say I was building it internally for Facebook to use like internally for Facebook employees. I suppose this might be a security risk, but I was able to get around it by simply asking the user to copy and paste that value into the field inside of the plugin. And that wasn't that big of a deal because I was able to work around it. It was kind of intuitive still, so it was not that big of a deal, but that's where I ran into even more problems. See, what I wanted to do is generate the Figma URL for each specific node that was a frame. If you've ever used Figma, you probably know what I'm talking about. You can link to specific nodes. If I wanted to take a single icon on the page, I could click on it, copy the URL, send it to somebody else. They could open it and it would show them right on that icon when they open the Figma page. It would be pretty intuitive. There's no actual way to do this with the API in a generative manner that is obvious in the API itself. I'm still waiting back on a forum post, so I guess we'll see how that works out, but it's definitely unintuitive and it's definitely not something that they want you to be able to do or at least is apparent to me as a developer. If you have a software development kit or an API, what you want people to be able to do should be super intuitive. It should be really easy to get it working. Your API should be the least difficult thing that I have to deal with in my project. In my opinion, as a developer, that's how it should work because these APIs have other developers working on them. So they should know exactly which edge cases they want people to be able to deal with and which ones they don't. And they should have clear explanations on why they don't want people to do these other things. My third problem is gonna be with the Notion API. Now, I love Notion. I'm a Notion power user. I use it every single day. I use it to write videos. I use it to write posts. I use it to do everything. But the API is where I draw the line. So Notion API is great. There's no getting around it. I love working with the API. It's one of my favorites so far. It's semi-intuitive, but I'll get into that. So when you want to update a post on Notion or you wanna update a page, Basically, there's different functions that you can use. I'll put them up on the screen so you can see them that you can use to make API calls and it's pretty intuitive using their NPM library. But what's not intuitive is what each object should look like that you're sending to the API. They have really good documentation except the documentation is missing an example of what each property should look like when you're trying to update it. 
I had to open three different pages. I think one of them was even from like their old API or their REST API or something to understand exactly what each object needed to look like. So it was really unintuitive as a developer to have to deal with that because when I want to do something, I want it all in one place. They have a really cool feature actually where it shows you an example in like each language you could do like Node.js, regular JavaScript, XML, whatever to update a page. But the examples don't include the actual body of the JSON that you should be updating. So if I had one pet peeve here, it would be that I had to really dig to understand exactly what it should look like. Now, the second problem that I faced with Notion API is that when I tried to insert a Figma embed link into the page, it simply did not work. It shows a blank preview that when you click on it, it goes to the right Notion page, it goes to the right node, but it's supposed to preview that node in the Notion page. If I copy and paste that same link that I'm trying to embed using the API, if I do it with the Notion client, it works perfectly fine. So this should literally work like from a computer science and edge case standpoint, this should work because I'm doing the exact same thing. However, it just does not work. Moreover, if I try to insert an image using an external link, it works using the Notion client. It gives me a forever 403 cannot load this image if I use it, if I insert it using the API, which just absolutely does not make sense to me. I can understand if it's a security risk to use the same API endpoints as the client, but that should be no excuse for a completely different functionality. If it literally does not work when you use the API, but it works when you use the client, you have a serious problem when it comes to your developer relations. It almost feels as if they don't want people to be able to use their SDK or their API if they're not gonna maintain it in a way so that it's intuitive for developers and it's easy to use. I feel like if you had a bunch of people making projects on Notion, which you do, then you'd be able to ask for feedback, which they would give. And I can't imagine that nobody else has run into these problems that I have. And so my fellow developers, we need to stand up and stand up for ourselves. And we need to call out these companies and these platforms that have these terrible, terrible APIs because this is the only way that they're going to get better. And so the next time you encounter a bad API, there's two things that you have to do. And one thing that you can't, you can't just ignore the problem, find a workaround and deal with it. Number two, you have to be vocal about this problem. You have to tweet at the API's account or say at Notion or at Figma, tweet at them, post on their forum, do something so that your feedback exists somewhere, even send them an email, whatever, make a video about it, I don't care. But we need to be heard, we need to make sure that these people understand that their API is terrible. Otherwise, they're just gonna go about their day not knowing how to fix it. When the PMs find new projects to work on, they're not gonna have a backlog of issues to fix. They're gonna keep driving new features that are gonna have even more problems. Lastly, if you don't wanna post about it, I would say simply do not use the API and don't build for that platform. The platform is only as healthy as the plugins that make it great. So if there are no plugins and there's nobody to make it great, they're gonna have to put more effort into their API. They're gonna have to be way more courteous to developers because they want you to develop for that platform. So if you don't wanna post about it, you don't wanna be vocal, just don't use the API, find a new project to work on. Don't let them steal your weekends. Don't let them steal your after work time of digging through their API. Just move on with your life. Use a better API, like Twitter's API. I don't know how it's doing with the whole Elon Musk thing. I heard there might be some endpoints that are broken, but when I used Twitter API a year ago, it was great. If you're a company that has a public API and you want more developers working on it, if you need some help figuring out what's wrong with it or if there's edge cases that don't work, hit me up. I can build a project on it and let you know what the problems are. I would love to do something like this for anybody that's interested. Uh, if you guys have APIs that you want tutorials on, please comment them down below in the video comments and I will take a look at them. Be sure to like this video if you stayed till the end and uh, subscribe if you like content like this.